What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today have we got a monster of a video for you. Today we're gonna to be answering a question that has been asked a lot. I've been asked a lot, and I've thought about a lot. Is the 1911 overrated or underrated? Well, to start this off, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience with the 1911, talk about the track record, the history, where it was developed, and how it compares with not only pistols throughout history, but modern day pistols, and where it fits in modern day if it does at all. Before we do that, I wanna mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys we have a lot of these guns on the table, and I'd really appreciate it if you go to the description of this video and sign up for Patreon. We try to make videos for you and not the industry, and if you like that, that's the best way to support us. Also in the description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS, those kids could really use your help, so please go down and donate to those kids. Now let's start out with one of my favorite guns in my collection, and has been for many years. This is my Wilson Combat. CQB 1911. I would consider this probably the pinnacle of the standard 1911. If you're looking for no frills, very similar features to what you would have gotten 40, 50 years ago, this is a relatively good example with some minor uh, adjustments, obviously, with the fiber optic sight, the extended magazine release, and the magwell. But it doesn't have a red dot, it doesn't have a rail, and it doesn't have all the modern features you might think of with modern 1911s, but it's certainly not an old school GI 1911 either. And I wanna talk about this because I wanna give the, the first example of 1911s are not exactly 1911s, at least not anymore. Now, the 1911 was introduced to replace six-shot 38 Special Revolvers like this guy right here. This is the Smith & Wesson six-shot target model, and these were a bit of an issue for troops overseas that were finding issues and putting down targets quickly. They had a lot of screaming people running at them with bayonets, and they wanted to put them down right now. They wanna go with something that had an autoloader, and they wanted a larger caliber in the 45 ACP. And such, the 1911 was born. The original GI 1911 was a 45 caliber seven shot single action, single stack magazine pistol. It uses the Browning action and it would later influence almost every other pistol design until today currently. Since 1911, this pistol was not only fielded in World War I, but World War II. It then entered Korea, Vietnam. It was still carried in a desert storm. And in 1982, it was replaced by the Beretta M9. However, that would not be the last that Americans would see of the 1911. It would continue to be carried by US Special Forces like Delta Force and many others as a status symbol and as a sidearm until modern day. Even right now, 1911s are still carried by US military troops in some capacity still today. And I think that's very impressive. And it has one of the longest, if not the longest track record of any pistol in military history, which gives it a little bit of points. Now, when we're talking about the evolution of the military pistol, I might as well show you. So we basically went from something like this, which is probably the other iconic American pistol. This is the Colt single action, as you see here. And this is gonna be a short, very abbreviated <laughs> history lesson. But we basically went to a six shot three or 38 special. Then we went to the 1911 and then we decided we needed a double stack nine millimeter, so we went with the Beretta M9 in the military trials, and I believe 1982, and it was either this or the SIG 226, and the US military went with the Beretta. More recently replaced by the M17 and M18, because now we wanted something lighter and more modular, which is interesting because still today, the 1911 stands the test of time, and you can see these carried right alongside these, really showing the staying power of the 1911, especially by comparison to a lot of the other military weapons that have came and gone since then. Now aside from US military service, the 1911 has also been carried by almost every law enforcement agency in the country at one point or another, not so much today, but are still carried in some areas in a little bit different capacity, which we'll get to in a minute. It's also carried by many civilians. As a matter of fact, I run into people all the time that still carry a variation of the 1911, but it looks more like something like this. Now, this is the Wilson Combat EDC X9, and it is a subcompact three inch version, obviously influenced very heavily by the 1911. You can also get models like this with shorter barrels. This is a Gerson, a $500 1911, and this is also a nine millimeter but you can see that it has a 4.25 inch uh, commander frame. I think this one actually has a 4.4, and then we still have a nine millimeter in this. But it evolved even further because it started to get used heavily in competition use. And once that took place, speed and accuracy was paramount. And as it turns out, the old school 1911 that's been serving the US military for so long also happens to have the best trigger in the world. 
So they took this idea and they started using these in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and eventually they found out there was just not enough capacity in this little girl to keep up with modern day pistols like the Glock, like the M&P, like the M9. So technically every other pistol on the market that isn't a STI is a double stack 1911. And I think that really can be shown with this pistol here. As you can still see all the old features that used to be in the GI 1911 with a bit of a paint job. We have a 22 to 27 round capacity, a 4.6 inch barrel, and all the custom features you could possibly imagine. And keep in mind that technically this is still a 1911, showing the evolution of it from its old days in the GI 7 shot 45 to the modern day handheld subgun. Very impressive in my personal opinion, what it came from to where it is now. Now along with adding certain race features as I mentioned before, these guns are available in almost every other caliber you could possibly imagine. If you want a tiny one, you can go with 380. If you want to shoot all day, you can get one specifically in a 22 long rifle. If you just want to shoot your handgun, shoot 22 sometimes, you can get conversion kits for them. They're a 9, 40, 45. If you want a revolver cartridge, you can get them in 357 Magnum, or you can get them in 460 or even 50 AE, I believe. So the 1911 has not only a diverse set of features, capacity, but it also has a pretty impressive caliber selection as well. If it doesn't fit your hand, you get bigger or smaller grips. You want a rail on it and put a light on it, you can do that. If you want to have target sights, you want to put an optic on it, you can do that as well. You can even have single-sided, dual-sided, or just left-hand only safeties and magazine releases. The 1911 is not only one of the most versatile, one of the most modular, one of the most accurate, but it's also arguably the fastest handgun in the world. If you look at the competition shooters, if you look at the peak speed and accuracy, all of them go to a 2011 if they can. And the reason is, is again that trigger, which we touched on earlier, but we're gonna talk about in detail. So first off, the 1911 is one of the only guns that's still around today that runs a single action design, which means the hammer has to be cocked back and the grip safety has to be depressed in order for the trigger to fire. Most guns today run a striker fired action that allows you to have the same trigger pull and not have to deal with these features, but what you don't get is a Chris two and a half pound trigger pull, which allows some amazing accuracy. Most of the accuracy issues that people run into when they shoot are going to be trigger control related issues. And if you take the poundage and the distance out of the trigger, you take all of the issues out as well, generally. Now, that makes it the most accurate pistol, but what makes it the fastest? Well, the reset, of course. <laughs> The shorter the distance between two points, the faster you can get there. And as you can see here, this is just my old Wilson 1911, and let's look at the trigger pull on this guy. Very short, very light. Reset it. Look at the reset. That's really incredible. If you consider just how quickly you can get on and off the trigger, that's how fast you can put down repeat shots. So even though this pistol has a limit of only 10 rounds, you can get them out super quick and they're gonna go where you want them to go. And I would consider that being more important than capacity personally, but if capacity is an issue for you, like I said, we've got double stack ones as well and another 22 is only a reload away. Another great thing about the 1911 is going to be the grip angle. The grip angle has been copied by almost every popular pistol on the market, and that's because it makes it incredibly pointable. The gun was designed to be pointed just like your finger. If you point your finger out to aim, that's the same grip angle you'll traditionally get with the 1911, and that's what we call the American grip angle, which the M&Ps have and many other pistols. Obviously not the Glock, which is it's gonna be its main competitor, but that is one of the things that people love the 1911 for, for sure. It's just very naturally pointable, and you don't have to train as much as far as present presentation in order to get sights on target when you're not thinking about it. Now another really great thing I like about the 1911 is going to be the different trigger reaches that you are allowed to have because of its design. You can put different bows in it to make them very short like this, or you can make them very long like this, depending on the length of your finger, and that allows you to place the pad of your finger in the exact spot you need to, increasing that already very impressive accuracy. Add to the fact that almost all of them have customizable grips or grip panels that you can install or take off to make them thinner or thicker, it really allows you to customize your pistol exactly for you, even more so than Glocks or even 320s in my personal opinion, because even though you can buy different grips for the 320, you can't change the existing grip to the very uh, minute level that you can a 1911 or a 2011. And I think that's pretty impressive. But sadly, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows, and there are a lot of downsides with the 1911 as well. First up is the big elephant in the room, the reliability. Now, the reliability of the 1911 
is a track record that is certainly mixed. Now with something like this, a Wilson Combat, a custom made $3,000 1911 made in the way that they used to make them, uh, they are very reliable, don't get me wrong. This one maybe has one or two malfunctions out of like 3,000 rounds. Uh, you can't however expect that with every 1911 in every situation. Now when most people compare the 1911 reliability, obvious what they're talking about is in comparison to the gun that basically replaced it on the civilian and the military scene, and that's going to be the Glock. The Glock is a polymer frame striker fired pistol that is the highest produced pistol of all time, and it certainly did take the 1911's crown. The way they did that is with lighter weight, a double stack magazine, a modular platform, a striker fired trigger, and unbelievably ridiculous reliability in adverse conditions or not. Now, one thing that Glock certainly has over the 1911 is going to be reliability while not being maintained. And I think that's one of the issues that you're gonna run into with the 1911 is that it just has to be maintained a lot more. dirty. It's a hundred year old gun that I haven't cleaned in a thousand rounds. Oh. And what I mean by that is you can run three, four, five hundred rounds for this gun, but since it has so much tight tolerances, you are going to have to clean it after that. When you can take something like a Glock and you can run two, three, or even four thousand rounds of extremely dirty ammunition, continue spraying lube in it like Peter North, and you're going to be totally fine. So I would say for long-term misuse, the Glock is certainly the go-to as far as that goes. Now, if you get into complete modularity, I would say the 320 definitely has a leg up considering it does in fact have a fire control unit, which is certainly a revolutionary attribute around the 320. Every single thing on the 320 can be replaced besides this fire control unit without buying another serialized part. So if you live in a, a state that's not very gun friendly, you can have just this fire control unit and you could have 10 different grips, 10 different slides, and you can make 10 different pistols. And that certainly is a leg up on the old 1911. However, the 320 has its own issues and if you'd like to know those, look at like any other video I have on 320s. I'm like <laughs> famous for talking about them. So we won't go over those in this video. However, just be known that there certainly are some advantages, long-term reliability certainly being one of those. Now, another issue with the 1911 is going to be it's heavy. I'm not gonna lie to you, if you get a standard GI 1911, steel frame, steel slide, you get 10 rounds of nine millimeter for 42 ounces. Now, if you're doing the math on that, 10 rounds for 42 ounces, as opposed to 17 rounds for 26 ounces, you're certainly getting gypped a little bit. That being said, they always compare the old 1911 to the more modern pistols when you could just compare a more modern 1911 to a more modern polymer frame pistol, in which case we do have actually the exact same capacity and the exact same size. So if you're interested in the pros of the 1911, but you don't like that capacity and you don't like that weight, well, I'll show you this Staccato CS right here, which in my personal opinion, does the best of both worlds. No. That dirty bastard, I got him though. Now another big downside of the 1911 is that it is not a product from one singular company. It's been around so long, the patents have been expired, that hundreds of companies make the 1911. So when we also compare 1911s, you'll pick a specific brand and then you compare it to an M&P or a CZ75, when in reality, it's not much of a comparison because you can't really compare quality control of 100 different companies to one. You can get 1911s at the $500 price point from something like Gerson and get a very good 1911. You can also get a 1911 for $500 from Taurus and get a very bad, very unreliable 1911 in most cases. All right, issues with the Taurus PT 1911. Yeah, the issue is that I bought it to begin with. <laughs> But you can go up from there to 750, you can get a Springfield or maybe a Kimber, which can be good or can be bad. You can get a Colt, which can also be good or bad, anywhere from 800 to $1,200. And then you get into something like a Dan Wesson, which are notoriously well-received guns that are very reliable. Wilson Combat, very reliable. Staccato, very reliable. Full Armory, very reliable, but they're all going to be much more than your average polymer frame pistol, simply due to the manufacturing uh, that you have to put into the pistol. It just takes more money to make. 
take. Even something like this Rock Island is a very good handgun for the money, especially if you get it done up and all prettied like I did from Hayes Custom. This was originally a $500 1911 that we put slide serrations on, a new trigger, and a rose gold coating on it, and it looks pretty slick, shoots pretty fast, but it won't break your bank. But that being said, it is just one example of a great budget 1911 versus maybe a not so good one like Taurus. There's just gonna be a lot more variations in quality and what type of firearm you might get out of the box if you get a 1911 versus maybe something like a 320, which is only made and maintained by SIG. Another issue with the 1911, for sure, no question, is going to be difficulty in disassembly and reassembly. Uh, it's not hard if you get used to it. The 1911 is actually the first gun I ever learned how to disassemble and reassemble. And for those of you who know what I'm talking about, I may have shot the, uh, the guide rod <laughs> up into the ceiling, but it's no big deal. It was my first time, and I still remember it as a fond memory cleaning a gun with my dad. That being said, it is very difficult to put together and put back together by comparison to something like a Glock, which you can take apart with literally two fingers two seconds and you can put it back together relatively easily that's why glock armors make me laugh all you guys in the comment section that say i'm a glock armor good for you you can get that on the back of a cereal box it's the easiest gun in history to take apart it's not a badge of honor now if you were a 1911 armor or maybe something like this i would be a little bit more impressed because there are certainly harder and easier guns to take apart and maintain the glock being the absolute easiest on the market and the 1911 being somewhere in between it's not super difficult but it's certainly not as easy as modern day pistols and if you consider the fact that it has to be clean more often than modern day pistols, you're gonna have to deal with it more. So it is going to be a thing that you're gonna have to deal with. It's gonna be a labor of love for sure. It really is a question of whether you like the accuracy, whether you like the look, because that's the other thing. The cool factor of a 1911 is second to none. It's one of the most beautiful pistols in the world. It's one of the most used in movies and TV. I mean, every time I see this gun, all I wanna do is say, hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Honestly, it, the cool factor alone would be enough for me to buy it, but it's the fastest and most accurate pistol I know. It has the best and coolest military track record in the history of the world, but you are gonna have to clean it more, you are gonna have to maintain it more, and it certainly is gonna be more picky with ammunition. So you have to often tune the guns to the ammunition that you're using a little bit more than you would a more forgivable CZ-75, Beretta M9, or Glock 19. And again, a labor of love is what I would call this pistol. But if you're looking for something very pointable, very modular, can be used in a left or right hand. And the old myth is of course during World War II that a pilot used a 1911, his sidearm, to shoot down another plane. And I think it's technically the only handgun that's ever shot with plane down, so that's pretty cool. Overall, I think the pros and cons of a 1911 are absolutely worth it. I think that you can get into it and you can get something like a race pistol like this and you can absolutely go as fast as humanly possible. Something like this is gonna be a lot faster than any Glock you can ever get, which is why they have different divisions in competition, in all fairness. And that is a really cool way to go. And you could also get something like this if you have enough money, of course, a very expensive pistol. And you could get something like the Staccato CS to carry in a very similar vein that you could a Glock 19 and get a Glock 34 for uh, carry and competition. It just really depends on which route you wanna go. You wanna go bomb proof, reliable, never have to clean it, or do you wanna go a little bit faster, a little more accurate, but can be a little more fragile in certain conditions. It's all personal preference after all. That's why I would consider the gun to be overrated and underrated. It really is a matter of what you want it for, what you're gonna use it for, and who you are. But honestly, if you were born in America and you don't like 1911s, we can't be friends. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please stop by our Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Give me another hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs>Take something like a Glock and you can run two, three, or even 4,000 rounds of extremely dirty ammunition, continue spraying lube in it like Peter North, and you're gonna be totally fine. Is that a joke it's I'm a, not supposed it's to It's a porn get. star, yeah. <laughs> the only one I can think of, he's from the 80s, but I don't keep on the male porn stars. <laughs> oh, some, some old guy's gonna get that reference. <laughs>